Hello, everybody, and welcome to Music Impossible. This is the first day of a really cool journey. Now, if you're on this playlist and you're starting down this road, this is Lesson 1, and it's meant for middle school and high school students who, uh, who uh, know a little bit about music and want to learn music theory. And this is the, this is step one in a very, very long and just really fun journey of learning how to put music together and what it means and how to analyze it and how to write songs and how to compose. This is where we start. Now, these first few lessons may be a review for some of you, but we're setting a really strong foundation. So down the road, we can build on that and build on that and build on that. Plus, some of the things you might hear or learn early in this uh, series of lessons is uh, some terminology that might be a little different than what you're used to, but we're going to make sure we're consistent with that terminology here and you understand all of those terms as we go through. All right, so we're going to start from the beginning. We're going to look at the piano keyboard. The piano keyboard in a lot of music writing is centered on the piano. It's easy to visualize some music theory things on the piano keyboard that the pattern that exists on with the two black and then three black and then two black and then three black, that sort of pattern allows us to see things visually uh, differently than just looking at it on music score paper. We can also analyze it and look at it on the piano. And really just want to make sure everybody understands where all of the notes are and how pitch works and things like that. So let's just start off with the musical alphabet. Most of you probably know this. There are only seven letters in the musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And once we get to G, we start over again at A. So you may notice that there's more than seven buttons or keys to push on the piano. So uh, as you go through the musical alphabet going up or down the piano, you uh, will go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then repeat starting with A. Also, when we think uh, about the piano, we uh, think about um, pitch, and pitch is the sound that you hear. And sometimes we hear high notes, and the higher end of the keyboard is to the right. So if I go to the right, we call that going up in pitch. Those are high notes that are played like instruments like flutes and piccolos and violins. Uh, higher end of the xylophones and clarinets would be your higher pitched instruments. And then we consider the pitch to be a low pitch when we go this direction. When we go to the left, this is considered a lower pitch. And your lower pitched instruments would be things like basses and cellos and tubas, bass clarinets, bassoons are some of your lower pitched instruments. The percussion instrument timpani is a lower pitched instrument. So the, some things to remember here today is we want to know our musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. The first to seven letters of the alphabet is the musical alphabet. And the word pitch is describes how high or low a note may sound. So you may hear words like note, and you may hear words like pitch, and think they might be the same thing. But pitch is the sound. Pitch is what we hear. Note is what we draw or see on a piece of music paper. So when we refer to notes or pitches during our lessons together, note the difference between the two. We're going to listen and hear pitches. We're going to talk about notes. Kind of a little uh, foreshadowing a little bit, just to sort of illustrate this point, is there are notes. One is an E-flat, and another one is a D-sharp. D-sharp and E-flat are two different notes, but they're the same pitch. Hmm, what does that mean? It's a big fancy word called being inharmonic, an inharmonic note. We'll learn that down the road, but the point is, is sometimes notes can be different, but the pitch or the sound could be the same. So it's really, really important that we understand the difference between pitches and notes. All right. If you are joining us for the first time, you may not know musicimpossible.com is a place you can go to get these same lessons, but we're also going to include worksheets and quizzes and tests to help improve your work. Remember, music theory is a lot like math. If you don't practice it, you won't retain it. You've got to do it over and over and over again. And just like math, it's a building blocks discipline. If you've ever taken Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, you're still using addition, subtraction, and multiplication and division that you learned in elementary school. Music theory is the same way. The things you learn today will still be applied 3, 4, 7, 15 years from now as you continue to study and grow in your music theory knowledge. Thanks so much for joining us. Next time, we're going to dive into the notes on the keyboard and work our way up from there. Really exciting things coming. Thanks for joining in. Like, follow, and share. We appreciate it. Have a great day.